when it comes to stories, our expectations are determined hugely by Hollywood cinema. We all know how it goes when a journey plays out in a feature film. The film's about two hours long, it begins with the hero setting out on a journey, they confront challenges along the way, and by the end they return home redeemed or transformed or whatever. The artists in Unguided 2 is offer journeys of a different and more idiosyncratic shape. They love to link small moments together, like Charlie Sofo. Um, they love to loop their stories, as Jae Hoon Lee does with his levitating staircase. Or like Ian Burns, they like to dismantle the cliches of the Hollywood road movie, the on-screen journey, and show us how it all works. For all of those reasons, this exhibition concludes with a work which refuses to conclude. The film installation behind me is by the Australian-born, Los Angeles-based artist, Rachel Kidori, and it's an artwork which takes us on a journey, but a journey which refuses to end. Rachel captured this imagery not in the remoteness of the outback, but in a local patch of forest, but it could be a forest anywhere. It has a kind of lost world lushness and density. And the camera tracks across this forest. And it's the kind of scene which if we saw it in a cinema, we might associate with the viewpoint of a soldier pursuing an enemy or an explorer entering the forest looking for some treasure, something undiscovered, something hidden. But in this work, we do not see any reward. We do not see any enemy. The story does not come to an end. Instead, all of the action occurs in the center of this work, where the back projection screen meets an exquisite, perfect mylar mirror. And at that point, the landscape seems to peel apart from itself. It seems to be involved in some kind of endless revelation. And what looks like a journey in in one direction becomes a journey out in the other. So the reflection, the projection, flows endlessly away from us. And if you stand in this space with other viewers, something fascinating starts to happen. People start to free associate and project. They see faces in these mirrored forms. They see bodies in them. So the work reminds me of uh, Rorschach ink blots, those symmetrical um, ink patterns which psychologists once used to try and coax conversation from their patients, to try and make people speak. One of the things I really love about this work is its extreme simplicity with its combination of a projection screen and a mirrored surface, literally a silver screen. It's a work that seems to take us back to some of the very early primal moments in cinema, when small audiences gathered in spaces and saw images of movement projected on walls for the very first time. It might have been a horse pulling a cart, it might have been a train arriving in a station, but audiences were awed by what they saw. But we are, of course, a very long way here from the world of Hollywood cinema. What Rachel offers us is not a journey to a fixed destination with a pat narrative conclusion. Instead, she offers us an endless search, an infinite flow of projections and reflections.